Hello, everyone. Welcome to Excessive Pop Culture Discussion. This is the unscripted show where uh, we're going to take you through all of the major pop culture headlines that everyone's talking about through the week. At least three of them. Yeah, at least three. (laughs) And uh, none of them will involve the president. It's all pop culture stuff. We're going to then dig into a bigger story that's going to be like a bizarre fan theory or some other weird thing, as you'll see we do later. I'm your host, Daniel O'Brien. With me this week is Soren Bowie from Cracked. And... Maggie Mae Fish from Cracked and yeah. the Internet and, that's and a, Comedy. That's my that's, yeah, perfect. There it is. Uh, guys, welcome. The first episode of uh, excessive pop culture discussion. I regret it yeah, you, so much. <laughs> it's like peanut butter in your mouth. Every time it comes out, you go, it's really bad. It's <laughs> because I have the show Obsessive Pop Culture Disorder, which just about scans and makes sense. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to do uh, a spin off podcast, ex- ex- Obsessive Podcaster Disorder. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't do that. <laughs> So I'm doing this instead, yeah. but I couldn't call this a podcast, so uh, now here we are. And we're, it, I mean, it fits. We're going to excessively talk about pop culture. You're very defensive. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the first episode. <laughs> oh, great. This is great. You're yeah, doing so We will so give you good. affirmations as we go oh through the episode. God. Thank you. Wow. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, let's start. Let's get into this week in pop culture. First headline that I want to talk about is about Wonder Woman, which came out today, the day that we're filming this. There's a big Hollywood Reporter article that was making the rounds on the internet. Uh, Warner Brothers gambles $150 million on its first woman-centered comic book movie with a filmmaker whose only prior big screen credit was an $8 million indie. And there are things worth pointing out. The $8 million indie in question was Monster. Right. Uh, yeah. Got Charlize <laughs> Theron an Academy Award and like completely changed the way Hollywood thought of her. That was a vehicle for yeah, her. Yeah. yeah. And everyone thought Patty Jenkins, Patty Jenkins, the director, was crazy because they're like, don't, Charlie Theron is just like a bombshell wife character. She can't play like a, a, a murderous prostitute named Monster. Yeah. Gee, it's almost as if <laughs> she saw Monster. her as a human. Yeah. Not a, yeah. Not a sex object. I think Monster's yeah. actually the name of the doctor in that. Oh, the, it's, oh, she's, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, she's, yeah. She's, <laughs> she's the Monster's <laughs> monster. <laughs> uh, other things about that movie, it cost $8 million, grossed $34 million. Um, and the other thing I want to point out about directors of superhero movies, yeah. the Russo brothers who did Captain America Winter Soldier. Before that, mm-hmm. they did Community and two episodes of Animal Practice. So they've uh, never done a movie at all? They hadn't done a movie, no. Oh, um, huh. James Gunn, before Guardians of the Galaxy, did indie film Super, budget $2 million. And before getting Spider-Man Homecoming, John Watts did, uh, I mean, obviously I don't need to read it because it's so f- recognizable and familiar. We all remember <laughs> that famous John Watts cop car uh, <laughs> on a $5 million budget. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the literal vehicle. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that one. And before Cop Car, he did a segment of the hyper-independent Our RoboCop remake. And to provide context of just how low, low budget that is, we also did a segment <laughs> of that movie. A bunch of people got together and did like six minutes of, at a time of that movie. And uh, our budget was nothing. We, yeah. our, I think we put uh, our director, we gave him a camera and put him on a an office chair. chair yeah. And that was our dolly. We just rolled him around the office. <laughs> well, so, and that didn't bother wait, to ADR. It so was like, just <laughs> <laughs> through every scene. So I believe we are now... On deck for a Spider-Man. Yeah, that's what exactly what I was gonna say. So yeah. that's we deserve it at yeah. this point. Yeah. <laughs> but the takeaway from this is that we uh, there weren't a lot of headlines about studios gambling on James Gunn or right. the Russo brothers or uh, John Watts or Colin Trevorrow who did an indie and then got Jurassic World and a Star Wars movie. No one was like, "This is a big gamble." I don't know if, right. if this is what it, what it takes. And I'm trying to find out. If there's any difference between James Gunn, the Russo brothers, Colin Trevorrow, John Watt, and Patty Jenkins, what's the difference no. between them and, and there was like a Venn her? diagram? Hold on, Maggie Soren, would you answer this question, <laughs> please? Uh, no, you're you're right, Dan. I'll just I haven't proved myself yeah. yet. <laughs> my my hot take is that it's because it's it's a woman, and the hot article take. is <laughs> sharp, is really Sizer. fascinating, and there's there's some like really depressing stuff in there. Like she, uh, Patty Jenkins was originally on board for doing Thor 2, right. and then she backed out. And while she doesn't call it out by name, there's a quote in there where she's just saying, like, sometimes I'll see a project with problems. And if I 
know it is going to be a problem movie that might be bad, then I have to walk away from it because the stakes are different for me. Mm-hmm. This is none of this is a direct quote, um, but it, she's just but saying that true. like if I make this movie that I know is loaded with problems and it's bad, it's my fault and it's women's fault. It's the stakes yeah. are different mm-hmm. than like because if a man did it, then it's another case where the studio screwed it up. Right, and, and that's also the same case for like for the Wonder Woman movie. There's so much pressure for it to be. Awesome yeah. and amazing, which it is awesome mm-hmm. and amazing. But there's so much pressure on it. It's like, this is where we are. Like, hopefully 20 years from now, we can have, like, really bad women movies yeah. that are just, like, suck and have, like, bad women directors, but it's okay because it won't matter. But now it so matters. Yeah, it's... She, anyone else will take the heat from that but the woman. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone yeah. seems to be asking in, the, in this article, like, can uh, Patty Jenkins make directing superhero movies a safe place for women directors, which is, <laughs> like, making a $150 million movie, that's already pressure. Yeah. Making a Wonder Woman movie, more pressure. Yeah. Saving the DC movie universe, <laughs> which she did. This is going yeah. to be, like, the mm-hmm. biggest bounce back in terms of ratings for a movie franchise I think it saved the history. entire franchise. Absolutely. Yeah. They uh-huh. should, DC needs to stop whatever their <laughs> plans are and, like, Steer. Now, yeah. Wonder Woman mm-hmm. is the focus. Stop. I don't want an Aquaman movie. Just right, build your universe that. around <laughs> Gal Gadot. Uh, is that it? Are you I sure? think so. I'm okay. almost positive. Mm-hmm. Um, I like it when you even know the name of something because I just know that you practiced it at home. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I like thinking about that in the mirror. And then getting it wrong a lot and getting yeah. really mad at yourself. <laughs> Slap myself. Yeah. <laughs> you'll get it right. You're doing great. You're doing yeah. great. This Thank is you. Great. The show is going really very good. well. Yeah. Yeah. I feel good. really yeah. good. As yeah. a, okay. I feel great. Great. Uh, we, my, my question is this is, mm. is like, does Warner Brothers or DC want this movie to fail for any particular, I can't think of a reason why, but they did a terrible job marketing it. And like we, oh, you, you, you spoke on that, yeah. right? Yeah. We have a video yeah. about that. And now everyone is already setting up this like, oh, if this movie doesn't do well, right? no more workforce for women, I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, there are these antiquated sections of the entertainment industry where everybody there is still kind of dinosaurs and they're operating on an old system. And mm. radio, we know, is one of them. Like yeah. terrestrial radio, <laughs> there's a woman in that group who's just who's only there to laugh at the co- at the hosts. Yeah. And she's called the whole. Yeah. Like, it's brutal. And then also the Ooh. the old staunch dudes who run studios. It's connecting in my brain. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, that's terrible. That small boy. Anyways. And then the, the old guy, the old brass who they they run studios. I think that in the same way where they're like, nah, the doll should just be in pictures. Like, yeah. Put her mm. in front of the camera. She's pretty. Right. Otherwise, get rid of her. And yeah. uh, mm. and so I don't think I think that there's probably uh, an element of it there where they maybe they're not waiting for it to fail, but they're like. Why would we put money behind this? Yeah. Right. The, this is this is not a, a big picture. This yeah. is not a project mm-hmm. that where we have like one of our, our heavyweights behind it because men weigh more than women physically. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. All of them. Heavy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Dude. Another. I know they're. <laughs> I know they're not. This is another like sexism is bad. Side note to this thing. I know they're not directors, but between Ryan Reynolds and Chris Evans, they have made four bad superhero comic book movies and. A few years go by, and the studios are just like, like oh, oh, Fantastic Four. You're not Captain Captain America. Fantastic Four, yeah. Fantastic Four mm-hmm. 2, R.I.P.D., which was a comic, okay. and Green Lantern. Yeah. And studios are still so like, bad. so bad. Worse. Give them another shot. The worst. Yeah. Give them another superhero. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. Well, there's also a thing to be said of like women being the object versus the subject of mm-hmm. the film. Uh, and I think it just makes. Like men uncomfortable being the object instead of the subject, and yeah. like a studio exec, you know, when they see the when they see like the the plan for the film, they're gonna yeah. be like, oh, I'm uncomfortable that uh, like I can't relate to this. this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, it's because we haven't seen it that often. Um, yeah. That was one of the things I loved about the movie that she was clearly the subject. Mm-hmm. The objects were, you know, clearly from her point of view, which from like a film perspective, we don't usually get to see. Yeah. So. Freaks yeah. people out. Yeah. And it is a good movie. Out. Everyone should see yeah. uh, Wonder Woman. Oh, I intend to. Yeah. I will. I'll see it. It's just <laughs> when it comes out on Apple TV because I've sure. got a child. Sure. <laughs> Maggie Mae, do you have something for us? I do. I yeah. know that you do because we oh. planned this. Boy, this is, this is so 
such a weird one. To me, this has layers. Oh, I'm just, just wait. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know, wait, I know what you picked out. Uh, okay, so there is a new Snow White remake film, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. which in the first place, you know, just because it's free, maybe it's not a good idea. Like, I know it's a free film, <laughs> Just because it's free might not be great. Uh, so it's about um, these dwarves, and the dwarves are princes who got, like, turned into into dwarves okay. and so they need to find these magical shoes follow me follow me with okay. on this yeah. find yeah. these magical shoes that snow white is wearing mm -hmm. to be turned back into princes yes okay it seems like her being snow white is sort of not necessary for this movie yeah uh <laughs> yeah seems to have nothing to do with anything this in the same way that shrek was like it, just an opportunity to play that Smash Mouth song. I feel like they're just aiming at getting back to that Spin Doctor song, Two Princes, and they're like, if we could just find something to write around that, we can play that at the end, and it will make a lot of money for us. Like a script for you. <laughs> uh, so anyways, yeah, uh, I guess there's a bit of controversy since, um, I guess Snow White, when she puts on the shoes, it makes her attractive and pretty and young, nice. mm -hmm. and when she takes them off, she is an average woman, right. um, but the movie implies that she is like ugly and- right. Oh uh, right, cause she's, yeah, they, 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 they make synonymous ugly and right. being overweight. Right. right. She, she <laughs> is, uh, we're reacting like you're telling us this for the first time, like, oh, interesting, but, but, but like, I mean, we have outlines yeah. in, yeah. in front of us. Uh, everything is a lie. Uh, yeah, so she is like a, a uh, chubby or like average body type person with the yeah. shoes off and then puts them on and becomes very skinny. Right. And uh, like Snow White, like you remember the, the oh, yeah. fairest of yeah. them all. The classic. Yeah. yeah. And the weird thing is, okay, so um, the girl who does the voice of Snow White, mm -hmm. uh, Chloe Grace Moretz. Moretz? Is that Moretz, it? yeah. I'm just gonna Moretz. Um, I mean, I'm gonna more till someone stops me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one, no one, no one. Okay. Uh, but she's usually she's like an outspoken feminist, um, and she came out and said like I'm super against the marketing campaign because yep. the marketing campaign was what if Snow White was no longer pretty, and it shows her like skinny self next to her like larger normal yeah. self, um, and she's a star, and she uh, had to come out and say, like, I did not approve this, like, no one on my team approved this. Um, they actually pulled the marketing campaign. Good. Uh, yeah, but it's still, it's still a question of, like, okay, so she read the script and thought it was a good story to share. Right, I, I assume that the script must be completely different than the way they're yeah. marketing it. Yeah. Unless, I mean, there are, like, there are things, sketches that we made years ago and then it takes a while they get shelled for whatever reason and they come out much much later mm -hmm. and they don't seem as timely maybe this was like they filmed and did all of this in like right. 1998 right because <laughs> yeah, within, it within like the that. last year and a half i want to say chloe grace moretz took a hiatus from acting she like canceled mm -hmm. a whole bunch of products project that she's done so this isn't there's no way this is recent within the last 18 months That's or anything true. like yeah. this this is this is well before because animation takes long yeah and mm -hmm. it's still when you first sent the links over to me and I was mm -hmm. just reading, oh, it's like Snow White, but what if instead of falling asleep because she got poisoned by an apple, she was like overweight and had magic shoes? <laughs> yeah, right. That's probably the worst part of this. Yeah. yeah. And then you get to the marketing, no. the, this giant post that is like, what if Snow White, but ugly and dwarves, but tall? <laughs> <laughs> No, that's the, so that's that a, is the worst part. Yeah, <laughs> it is that, weird also that it's she's only beautiful when she wears these high heels yeah. and there are heels in it. And it's it's very strange, like yeah. Yeah. that that's and and that they that they made it ugly. That they're like, what if Snow White was ugly? Yeah. Yeah. And like in the trailer, even you watch it, and there are these the trailer uh, is cringy. They're those, yeah, like, creepy everyone should watch the trailer. Watching a lady. Watch, like, there's two dwarves who are like, yeah, this woman's taking her clothes right. off in yeah. front of us. They sneak into the house and then they hide under an ottoman while she is getting changed because she thinks she's in the privacy of her home yeah. and there aren't and dwarves under And they're each other like, we're yeah. about to see some pink <laughs> parts. Yeah. Like, woo! <laughs> and then, and she does get naked and that that's just walked over yeah. and then she yeah. comes over and stands in front of them, takes off one shoe and a foot comes down and it's a very heavy foot. Mm -hmm. And these dwarves react like, I can't believe we were f***ing into her! <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, this is the gross, <laughs> I'm gonna throw up! <laughs> Uh, in so many levels. Bad yeah. movie, bad marketing. They yeah. got tricked into liking a fat woman. <laughs> yeah, so upset. Yeah. And really, and that's the joke. I can't imagine what they could have done to be for these princes to have been cursed. They seem like such upstanding <laughs> <Yeah>. guys. <laughs> <laughs> so right. Oh boy. <laughs> 
Maybe they do. Then maybe they're going to direct the next Spider-Man movie. I'm sure they will. <laughs> Those dwarfs will direct the next Spider-Man movie. Uh, Soren, what a uh, what fun pop culture uh, yeah. headline do you have? Yeah, for you know, us? it's just some fun pop culture. Uh, mine's about car culture and about the internet as well. And uh, this long-standing um, fear I've had that's now just coming into fruition. Okay. There was a. Uh, uh, a biker gang from Tijuana called the Hooligans Motorcycle Club. Oh, I love it. Yeah, that's what they call themselves. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Oh. And they stole uh, $5 million worth of Jeeps from San Diego. And the way that oh. they did it was that they walked around San Diego, looked at the VIN numbers of cars. This wasn't from lots, Jeep lots mm-hmm. or anything. This is from uh, just out in the residential neighborhoods. Looked at the VIN numbers and then hacked into a database that had all of the key codes because the key codes are, it's not like a tangible key anymore that you put in. Oh. They could find the key codes for those VIN numbers and then just replicate the keys, the, the key numbers. And Wait, this is a biker gang that did that? I know. <laughs> like, you need I to know. back that up. What? <laughs> yeah, so this, this biker gang that like clearly has shows some uh, technological initiative. Yeah. Um, they wow. figured out what would be the equivalent of seeing a map online of every single how the key looks in, the, in a detail. And then you also have a key maker there who can make it all. So they just went in. Uh, they went back to L.A. Uh, I'm sorry, San Diego. And they just unlocked all these cars, hacked into the cars, basically, oh into the, the systems inside the car, and then drove them all back to Mexico. And uh, the reason I bring this up and the reason that's interesting <clears throat> to me is that you uh, were in the gang. I was in this gang. It was uh, your were idea. You the, yeah. It's like, blood in, guy? blood out. Yeah. Which guy were you? <laughs> really just a lookout. You look like a lookout. <laughs> <laughs> I was not the computer expert. Yeah, okay, but that right. guy didn't feel good about his place in the gang either. I would tell you that. He was very, he was like, I didn't get into this for computer work. <laughs> My dad was an HMC and he ran a lot of drugs. His dad was an HMC. He got a bunch of tattoos and now I feel like this is mostly office work. Like yeah. I'm doing a lot more hacking <laughs> right. than I think. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not. Listen, we're going to do all the other stuff other. Yeah. But later. Uh, uh, I need you to actually come in for uh, after double time on Saturday, if that's all right with Wait you. Wait a minute, I'm beginning yeah. to think that's why you guys put me in this room. <laughs> um, but so we have this this sort of illustrious tradition of being afraid of computers and cars uh, that shows up in movies like iRobot and Logan, where mm-hmm. the cars mm-hmm. uh, are now dangerous as well because somebody else is in control. And our initial reaction to this is always, well, if somebody can hack into my car, they're going to take out my brakes and drive me towards a bridge. Like, we're not thinking about it like a thief would. We're yeah. thinking about it... <laughs> like uh, these enemies are in the matrix that want to yeah, kill us. Yeah, just some troll, yeah. <laughs> right, and so, but what's actually, this is this is much more likely what's going to happen is that these cars get stolen much more easily um, and there's just no cybersecurity in yeah. cars now. So there's a lot yeah. of uh, onboard computers in these cars, but they haven't really thought it through at all as far mm-hmm. as what they're doing because they're discovering now that these companies didn't even anticipate that there would be a second owner of these cars. Like mm-hmm. once your fingerprint is on the car, it's just, it's on there. So you can't ever wipe it. You take <gasps> it back to a dealership. I never thought of that. Oh my god! Yeah, you take it back to a dealership, and uh, they even if they factory wipe, like they, yeah. they they set reset it to the factory standards, you're still in that car. And they, there was a guy actually. Uh, his name was uh, Charles Henderson. And there's this RSA conference. Classic is, gang gang member name. Charles, oh, he's not in the gang? No, he's okay. not in the gang. This is a guy who's he, he's attending this security conference, this uh-huh. IT security conference called RSA. And he uh, he discover, or he he brought to the table and showed everyone there that a car that he traded in two years ago to the same dealer where he bought it, that he could still unlock the car, he could honk the horn, he could do all kinds of things. He could find it on GPS and unlock it. So yeah. two years after trading it in, he could go find that car wherever it was and take it. And they've never anticipated that this was going to happen. Yeah. In addition to that, there's no cybersecurity. They're now discovering there's no cybersecurity in these cars for like malware attacks. And it's so easy because all of them are connected mm-hmm. to the internet. Yeah. So the malware, there, there's so many ins for somebody mm-hmm. to get into the car, um, even if they're not going to steal yeah. it, just right. to f- it up. And there's no uh, security methods. And there's also, you can't do like a software update. These aren't like laptops or phones mm-hmm. where products that you own for two years yeah. or three years, these are cars that you, are uh, products that you own for ten or fifteen years, yeah. and there's no way. I mean, there's not there's nothing like for a software. There's no software recall. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mm-hmm. guess there could be, but then like, you have to bring your car back to the right. dealership, and some specialist has to come mm-hmm. like take it for a for a while. I mean, at a base clear. level, it seems clear that they don't have anything. They 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 hadn't considered this, and they have yeah. nothing in place. Never. Like, and so here's like the here's the scariest part is oh, that no. <laughs> the yeah, gang is I getting either. high off yeah. it. <laughs> Do you remember uh, just recently there was the Wanna Cry ransomware yeah. mm-hmm. uh, breakout? There was like 300,000 computers all over the world. And what they did basically was they uh, shut down your computer. They got malware in. They shut down your computer 
And if you wanted to open it again, you had to pay a certain amount of Bitcoin to just this rogue account. Of course it's Bitcoin. Yeah. Those nerds. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's threaten the hackers, uh, Maggie. <laughs> oh, no. So, don't know where I live. that's what everybody thinks is going to happen now. There's a group called FASTER, which mm -hmm. is the F A S T R, and that stands that's for. Fun. Future. I like that too. <laughs> yeah. You want that tattoo instead? Yeah. <laughs> uh, future of automotive security technology research. These guys are at the head. They're at the forefront of uh, all the technology that's in cars, and mm -hmm. they're saying, "Yeah, there's going to probably be a ransomware on cars this year." And they're saying yeah. this was in Consumer Reports, and they're like, mm -hmm. "We're expecting it to happen this year." That that. Hackers will find, because now the cars have been out long enough that right. they can get there, they can start figuring out the technology, and they can figure out where the best entrance is on a lot of these mm -hmm. cars. And to rans uh, ransomware somebody's car, like you can just get a notification on your the little screen if you have, let's say like a Tesla, it would be like right here, and it would be it would just say, if you want your car back, you pay this much. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously you'd want that a lot more than say your laptop, because the car is worth more. Right. right. So it's so much, you can charge so much more, and now it's just a big paperweight that you can't ever yeah. use again unless you pay the wow. ransom. All we can hope for is that there kind of inept, like this, this uh, a hacker is making headlines today. So hey, four headlines. Um, he is the guy who threatened Netflix because he, he got all of Orange is the New Black and was like, you gotta oh, pay me Bitcoin mm -hmm. or I'm gonna release episodes of this show. And Netflix was like, I don't think you understand how our business model works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have the subscribers already who are gonna watch the show. Yeah. And uh, so he leaked some of the show and nobody cares. Mm -hmm. And then he announced recently, like I think today actually he announced ABC might be next. Everyone watch this space and like, oh man, oh, definitely don't leak yeah. Quantico. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't Bachelorette. Scorpion or whatever they yeah. have. What that? I'm sure that's CBS, out. but I actually honestly don't yeah. know anything that ABC yeah. shows anymore. Well, it this, seems like a, it's like an intersection of they like wanting to have the best product because everyone wants a smart car with all like the mm -hmm. gadgets and stuff. Yeah, of course. But, and like that's where the technology, that's where they're competing, but they're not competing on keeping it safe. So no. that's why none of that just Yeah, even if there's like some sort of legislation now where right. they're like, all right, we've got to crack down. The government's insisting that you make these these new regulations and mm -hmm. your and these protocols. Even if that exists now, there's so many cars out there that are gonna continue to be out there yeah. for so long right. that are just I mean, that are you could make useless in five seconds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our uh, unchecked glee and eagerness to put computers into things that didn't used to have computers yeah. is has always been really alarming to me because uh, We've known about hackers since, gosh, at least the movie Hackers. <laughs> Probably oh, a little man. bit before then to inspire the movie. Yeah. And computers have always been hacked, but still, for the last 25 years, we're like, we could put a computer right in your phone and yeah. in your car. Yeah. And we could put a computer and an internet in your coffee machine now. You, yeah. can, you can like use your phone to turn on the lights in your house and then brew coffee in the morning. Like the internet of things mm -hmm. is, a, is a real thing. And I can't imagine security is any better on no, any No, it's, it's actually worse. And in fact, those are ah. such, there was such charming optimism to that because when it's like all the stuff in your house, a lot of those companies are out of business now. So really? there's nobody mm -hmm. to ever do any sort of like recon when there's that stuff goes wrong right. or that they find that there's some sort of hole in it. So now like your Nest, well, Nest is a bad example because mm -hmm. Nest is still around, but like your uh, uh, home air conditioner or whatever, your system, mm -hmm. Is now totally vulnerable, yeah. and it makes you vulnerable as well. Right, someone's I mean, gonna make my house eighty degrees. Right. <laughs> I hate when it's well, the fear is I'll be driving, <laughs> driving my car with a computer in it, and then the computer will switch to a, a picture of my dick that my coffee machine took. Yeah. Like, oh <laughs> boy, I don't care <laughs> if that's good. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I gotta stop showing my coffee machine my dick. <laughs> I thought it liked it. <laughs> Seems threatening. All right, that's the weekend headlines, guys. Let's yeah. get into the main story. <laughs> Our main story this week, Game of Thrones, as it I'm sure will often be. Uh, <laughs> HBO announced that there will be uh, uh, four planned Game of Thrones spin-off pilots, each with different writers already attached to them. And these pilots, that doesn't mean there's going to be four shows that come out, they're just mm -hmm. like testing four different shows. And then George R. R. Martin announced that there would actually be five. He announced that on some writing he did on his blog. <laughs> of course he did. Even though he should only be writing. <laughs> of course he did. Right, he, like, take the time to pedantically correct game, uh, HBO, <laughs> right. even though they'd get around to it, he's like, oh, they said four? I better write 9,000 words in my blog about this instead of Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, catch it, you got ready to do already, George. You have yeah. an assignment. I need There's him no extra credit assignment. here. Right, I need him to make Game of Thrones. A lot of people want him to finish Game of Thrones because they're worried that he's going to die, yeah. which is, Legitimate I, I think, rude. I also want him to finish 
because I might die. Anyone <laughs> might die. And I like Ooh, boy. I need him to, to get these books done because life is chaotic and arbitrary. Yeah. Which he is very familiar with. And so he's just <laughs> getting on with these fing books. But anyway, <laughs> they're planning five more Game of Thrones uh, spin-off or successor shows, whatever they're trying mm -hmm. to call them. We know that none of them are gonna be sequels. We know that mm -hmm. it won't be a prequel show that exclusively focuses on Robert's Rebellion. That was the rebellion that gets talked a lot about in the show right. that uh, uh, when Robert Baratheon went to go rescue uh, Lyanna Stark because she was <coughs> kidnapped by <laughs> the Targaryen yeah. and that was with wow, the chicka, wow, Mad wow. King, all that stuff. Yeah, That uh, seemed like it would be a great show because all the characters talk about it. And, like you meet mm -hmm. Barriss and Selmy, this badass knight, and I was like, remember that thing you did in Robert's Rebellion? Let's just talk about it yeah, instead yeah. of ever seeing right. it. Basically like meeting Yoda in the A New Hope, or, or yeah. Uh, yeah. in Empire, yeah. where mm -hmm. you're just like, well, yeah, he, he was probably totally rad in his yeah. prime, but now he's just this old guy, and now he's dead. Okay, yeah. okay. Right. okay. Um, But so we're not seeing Robert's Rebellion. We're also not seeing uh, a uh, Dunk and Egg, which is uh, an in-universe... Uh, <laughs> Dunk and Egg is the title you Dunk yeah. and Egg. I didn't yeah. know it's, about this until Oh yeah, it's like a, it's, yeah. it's novella series that George R. R. is still in the process of mm. writing right now. It's about uh, Sir Duncan, who becomes the commander of the Night's Watch, mm -hmm. and mm. his buddy Aegon Targaryen, who becomes the future king of Westeros. It's them yes. when they're like mm. buddies. And uh, we're not gonna see that because he's still working on it and mm. He doesn't want HBO to do another show that will then inevitably laugh, laugh him. <laughs> yeah. And the reason he w doesn't want to do Robert's Rebellion is he's saying that by the end of the books, uh, you'll have known everything that happens in Robert's Rebellion. If he finishes the right. books? if he finishes which... the books. And also, like, well, I know what happens in Game of Thrones because I've read the books. Right. right. But I still like watching the show. Uh, right. And also, what, what does he think is... How is that all going to be answered? Are they going to... Is it just going to be... All entire book of just Bran watching it all happen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't do that. That's yeah. cheating. But uh, we uh, are not insiders. None of us work for HBO. Uh, none of these shows, like, nothing has you come out. You sounded like you. <laughs> pretty bummed by that. Too, you I, no, no, it's, uh, it's just, I, I came up with the, it's not TV, it's HBO. It's, it's That's right. Whole thing That's, that I, I remember that. That's a lie, Maggie. Yeah, I come up with that. Did I look that gullible? Am I that gullible? No, but you did. Uh, there was certainly a moment where you were like, I can't Yay. tell if he's telling the truth. <laughs> it's it's really fun for me because from my vantage point, you're saying a thing that I know is a lie, and I'm watching Maggie not be sure, and like, you're split with a question mark. So I'm, <laughs> I'm just like, I think I was just like feeling like Dan radiate on me, yeah. like if I was gonna. <laughs> Uh, all for it. But today, um, all of us uh, uh, Hollywood outsiders are going to spend a lot of time speculating on what shows we think they'll make or we hope they'll make. And uh, I don't know, I'm kind of hoping to make some money off this if any of our shows get yeah. taken. Oh, like, like I don't need like showrunner, but like just yeah. what, be, what might be cool. Well, I mean, bit. you guys are two men and you've been yeah. on, uh, <laughs> you've done something before. I'm sure next will be a We did, we did a sketch show. once. Yeah. yeah. We did a superhero sketch, wildly yeah. unpopular. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We did uh, three of them. <laughs> yeah. I did three qualified. superhero sketches. Yeah. So, I'll go make uh, an Oscar winner and then I'll come back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. you're making a cute little Oscar winner? Yeah. Eight million dollar Oscar ending. I do like that HBO released that notification and that there's already writers attached that those writers didn't know. And they're like, yeah. we have to write a, sh a different show? <gasps> oh, okay. And then they'll see this now, and we can give them this information. They'll be like, yeah. oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, and I'll take, I'll take a story by, or original concept by, or a lot of money. I just want to <laughs> be just, like, like... get my beak and yeah. sopping. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be in the background and have like one of my teeth blacked out, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks. I know what I have to go. <laughs> I have to yeah. put yeah. my bar this right is here. Right, a very... <laughs> Gender focused episode that we're aspiring to be showrunners, and you're like, background wench, please. Background yeah. wench, please. Thank you. <laughs> My mom always said, aim small, miss small. <laughs> <laughs> so, Soren, do you want to pitch your Game of Thrones show? I do, yeah. Uh, okay, so I want to go back to uh, even before uh, Egg and Dunk. Dunk and Egg, yeah. Dunk Sir egg. Duncan and Aegon. Okay, yeah. Before uh, Aegon basically unified all of Westeros, uh, even before that, to uh, Old Valeria, when Old Valeria was a thing. Uh, it was this little peninsula that's at the bottom of uh, Essos, and it's it, for thousands of years, like 5,000 years, it was the equivalent of ancient Greece. It was just this mm. epicenter of civilization where there was magic and there were 
I'm not. I don't think that there was magic in ancient Greece. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but where they had like and gods who talked to each other and they yeah. quoted a lot. <laughs> but they had. Uh, it, it was all uh, a bunch of scholars and uh, philosophers, and they came up with all kinds of, of amazing things there that then were lost to time afterwards, like Valerian steel that they don't even know how to mm. make Valerian steel anymore because their process has been lost. And it all gets lost in this thing called uh, the Doom. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the doom, nobody really knows what it is, but all of a sudden all of these mountains exploded at once oh. and the peninsula fractured into these islands. Mm-hmm. And after that, the city just just fell apart. And every, the only people that got away, I think, were there some t- Targaryens that moved to mm. yeah. Dragonstone and stuff. Um, but uh, I would do a story that takes place in Old Valeria uh, leading up to that event. Mm. Yeah. And you kind of, what you're leading up to is finding out how that happened. Because there's all, if you talk to any of the different characters in the books or the movie, uh, in the show, they all have like a different answer for why this event happened. Some of them just think it was a natural disaster. Some of them are like, Oh no! There were uh, like wizards that were responsible. Like they just they dropped right. the ball and, the, right. and mm-hmm. they were the ones keeping this mountain in, the, intact. And then they dropped the ball and they all exploded. And so mm-hmm. you would get uh, this story about like this cool civilization that has their dragons flying yeah. everywhere within the city. There's no they, they, there's like a uh, no ceiling on some of these mm-hmm. uh, buildings because they go all the way up into the clouds and you can't actually see anything above them. Nice. Um, and it would be really cool. Uh, it would be a lot more political because mm. like the first season was, which I very, very much liked yeah. in Game yeah. of Thrones. Uh, and just all these political people vying. But also magic is just sort of peripherally happening everywhere mm. all the time. Yeah. And everybody's very dangerous. Then they all have purple eyes and platinum <laughs> hair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to rescind that um, because I don't want everyone to look exactly the same. I don't want that to be my brand. Uh, <laughs> that's what you want the show to be. You want the show this to be a bunch of... I would love this yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you you get to find out as it goes what yeah. actually mm-hmm. happened. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. I like the I also loved the political stuff. I mean the the battles are cool, but I see every time the show we're ramping up to a new show and Entertainment Weekly today they're talking about season seven and the uh, producers like when you see this big battle in yeah. season seven mm-hmm. and probably there's gonna be another one in season eight. It's gonna blow your mind how cinematic and great this battle is. It's like my favorite scenes are <laughs> Tyrion, Tywin, and Cersei talking <laughs> in a table. For eleven minutes, that's that's got yeah. me hooked in this show. Right, my my favorite is Cersei looking at Peter Baelish and being like, "No, power is power." Yeah, mm-hmm. like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like just the look in her eye, or like right. I choose mm-hmm. violence. You're like, ah, yes, yeah. this is what I live for. Yeah. Not the, and not this the show battles. would be a, a, a bunch of perfect Aryan people. Your words, uh, uh, doing politics mm-hmm. and magic, and dragons are just around. Like no one's going right. to war, yeah. but I'm mm-hmm. sure they're scheming and they're like. I don't know, coming up with stuff, right. inventing stuff. And yeah. you still have the thing of like, uh, like you know, nature and weather versus like the political stuff, which is kind of like the theme of Game of Thrones. You yeah. still have that happening. And that there's this looming threat that there's somebody who's in charge of like making sure that this nearby mountain yeah, right. stays intact. And, and he fails, apparently. So <laughs> yeah. which, how I, did that I, which I hope is the thing that, you're, that someone is like wandering around the countryside and they're like, what do you do? Oh, I'm, I gotta do this all the time, <laughs> or else uh, I'm not exactly yeah. sure. It's sort of a lost situation. Oh, in the do hatch. you want? I have a ham sandwich. Would you yeah. like some? Oh yeah, that would be great. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, it blows up the mountains. Oh, that's surprising. I thought it was like a fire rain, but sure. This is... And I like that in Old Valeria, because now we're always dealing with them discovering magic again, and some people still don't believe it, and some mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. And like dragons just have existed here for thousands of years. We're right. dragon, we're cool with dragons. Right. Also, we're cool with magic. Like mm-hmm. everybody knows how to use it here. Everybody's really good at it already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's no like none of that dumb clumsy magic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. some people have dragons. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's like a, a better version of. <laughs> We Pompeii starting kidding. Exactly. Yeah, it feels very much like the last days of Pompeii, but now uh, Pompeii is somebody's actual fault. Right, right. Yeah. That's a, such a bad movie. I've seen it 15 times. There was, uh, Jon Snow did a Pompeii movie. I did not know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is all news to me. Was this recent? Uh, two years? Yeah, two, three oh, years since ago. since he's been Jon Snow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, it's bad. It's so You don't remember bad. that he did Pompeii and then, like, Took off as a leading man in lots of action <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Pompeii, like the the thing, details of Pompeii that I really like, and I hope that they included this in the movie, mm-hmm. was that afterwards archaeologists came and like found a bunch of tunnels and stuff that were preserved, and all the depictions were just porn on the walls, like things <laughs> that they scratched in, and the and the archaeologists who discovered it were really pious and religious, and they were just mm-hmm. like. We're just not going to show this to anyone. And they closed oh. it up. They sealed it up. Oh, good lord. They didn't include that. The, the third uh, act of the movie is Kid Harrington just being like, 
No, I can make them bigger. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> ah, right, ah. right. This is where <laughs> I die. <laughs> Amid what I love. <laughs> Maggie, what's your show? So, my show is, I think it'd be a good like juxtaposition if we're still pitching to future writers. Yeah. Uh, so, I want to do a show about the um, Brotherhood Without Banners. Uh, yeah. Just like, because to me, they, they're a good example of like, again, like, like small moments of the show that I like. Yeah. You know, like two character scenes uh, where we really get a lot of personality because, you know, they're just this, this band of like ragtag, um, like Robin Hood characters. Mm -hmm. uh, and really their only mission is to protect like small towns, small people from like the overlords ruling over them. So yeah. Yeah. to me that's That's like really a Seven thing. Samurai situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. really cool. I like, yeah. there's like a, like fun inconsistencies to them. Yes. In, in the ones that we've seen where they're like, we're gonna get you home, Arya. Mm -hmm. Wait, we heard there's Lannisters to rob? All right, we're gonna do that instead. Uh, gonna, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They like, just abandon their course at every yeah. turn. Yeah, the main mm -hmm. priest who's just drunk all the time and doesn't mostly believe in God, but he's yeah. like, yeah, I'm the priest and I can bring back people from the dead. Yeah. And I mean, like, what? the Lord of Light brings it back or whatever. <laughs> I don't really buy into that shit. Yeah. <laughs> and you just have one character who dies every episode. Right, yeah. of And course. he just has to be brought back yeah. again. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really like that yeah. a lot. I like that, yeah, that they're, that they just go around to these towns. And like occasionally you'll get a story, it'll feel very much like Magnificent Seven, and then occasionally mm. you get a story where they go to a town and they're like, we need you to protect us, like we're gonna be attacked by the Tollies or whatever the f right. and, and they're like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna help you. And they're like, no, 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 there's uh, this other thing going on over here. And they're mm. like, yeah, that sounds way more yeah. fun. Yeah, there's a lot more money in that. Yeah. <laughs> and so the priorities are different in that yeah. world. Mm. It's just, there's no ethics at all. I like yeah. that a lot. I think if they have a character that uh, keeps dying every episode, it should be <laughs> Justin Thorough when Leftovers is done. And he, just, like, <laughs> oh. he dies, they bring him back, he's like, do it again. Do it again. Yeah. I got some more stuff I gotta there's do. There's a, you're not gonna believe this. There's a, I don't know what to call it. It's a big building and there's gla dragon glass, I wanna say, in the windows. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to describe a hotel to somebody in like <laughs> ancient times. Uh, I like that show. We've got, I'm gonna do my show now. Yeah. Okay. We're just about out of people. Oh, I wanna boy. do the beginning of the wall, like when the wall oh, first man. gets built That's in a the good north. Idea. Um, it's for, Suck up. for <laughs> <laughs> this show's going very well. This is a good show. I'm it's having for, fun. <laughs> for similar reasons that you like you like that magic exists in Old Valeria. I like that for the wall too, because in Game of Thrones proper you've got people mm -hmm. who are, are Tyrion is like, hey, I heard there's White Walkers, and everyone's like, F off. Do you also believe in dragons? All the magic is gone, all the right. things are dead, and like magic is slowly creeping into the world, and it's a plot point in the show. With the wall, they built the wall because of the monsters. So you wouldn't mm. have a character that is like, White Walkers, those are just a fairy tale to scare children. Another character would be like, no, 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 remember? We there, just, yeah. we just built this wall. You were there for that. You can see that. You laid a lot of the ice at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. You did a great job. Was, what did you think yeah. we were doing? <laughs> yeah. What do you think this is here? Yeah. Actually, what do people think that? It was to keep out like monsters right. and, and I guess the free folk, but like they, they right. initially built it for, for monsters. monsters. Yeah. And then they, they the, the stories became, oh, it's yeah. just to keep the free folk out. This is all politics. Right, yeah. right. But uh, yeah, you, once you'd actually see those monsters and then like deciding on like, somebody mm -hmm. being ambitious enough to be like, we could build a wall so high they can't climb it. It's yeah. like, yeah. It also I don't know what you're, I can't even that see with something that big. Yeah. <laughs> if I was in, I'd be like, I'm not helping. That sounds yeah. so dumb. <laughs> um, and also the show would just be like, knights versus zombies now. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's Walking Dead, but it's freezing, and everyone's Michonne, because they mm -hmm. all have swords and axes and stuff, and there would be, uh, I like a focus show about the Brotherhood, mm -hmm. but I also like how expansive Game of Thrones is, and this is the same way, because we have mm -hmm. the wall with multiple castles. We also have zombies and free folk. We have wildlings that um, have not been united by, uh, yeah. goodness gracious, right. Mance. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. They haven't been united by Mance yet, so it's like all these different factions, so you can still have battles. You got the cannibalistic Thens, you've got yeah. mm -hmm. giants who ride right. ma massive mammoths. And <gasps> I mean, what's their deal? And <laughs> <laughs> what do they do on the off days? I also like that there's not, the, the wall hasn't been around, like it's just starting. So there mm -hmm. aren't like old hats at the Night's Watch. It's not like the, the wise people who see yeah. it all and are instructing. It's a bunch of band of brothers guys. They're all young, mm -hmm. they're doing this for the first time. And at the beginning of the wall, they really took their duties as, as members of the Night's Watch very seriously. And right. uh, it wasn't for like, outcasts. Like, it wasn't for outcasts. Like, now it's wall. like a, a, yeah. a penal colony, but yeah. then they were like, we're protecting the realm from the monsters. Yeah. So there was these really cool, like, very serious, badass knights fighting 
fucking zombies. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there'd be like long discussions about uh, what should we do? Should we stay at the wall? I'm in love with a. Oh, that would be great. Whatever. You could have you could have battle scenes where they're fighting against like. Uh, the cannibals, for instance, and then they both have to stop in the middle of fighting to fight off this, yeah. these right. Death yeah. Eaters or That's whatever they are. Pause real quick. Yeah. Yeah. We'll take care yeah. of this. You could really dig into like the like the mystical magic of like where did they all come from? Yeah. Like the yeah. broccoli people. And we get the, yeah, the we get broccoli the people. Yeah. Broccoli, yeah. broccoli children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and they yeah those because those kids are they have a whole society up there. They're the ones that like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Uh, I like this idea a lot. I yeah. like the creation of the wall, even if it so. Was, will you green light, green, green light it? Yeah, yes. it's, it's green li lighted. Oh, green lighted. <laughs> green. Uh, yeah, I like it because I mean, you could even do it from just the perspective of all these wildling kingdoms, and you're pass you're mm -hmm. moving around between them, and instead of like the, the the looming threat of this virus coming down and infecting everybody, instead the the looming threat is. Everybody kind of knows maybe there's a wall being built and they don't yeah. know why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, are we on the right side of the right. side? Warrior. Just some, some wildling coming up to a night's watchman is like, where are you, uh, <clears throat> seems like you guys are yeah. chopping down a whole lot of trees <laughs> yeah. to make sure yeah. that no one can sneak up on something. Yeah. I'm not really sure. I feel like, do you need a hand with that? No, 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 man. We're, we're good. We're all yeah. good. You're, yeah. You're, don't worry about like, it. How are you going to get property divide? <laughs> how are you going to get people like over here to help us when we're in trouble? Oh, we're not. We're not coming back to this side. Yeah. <laughs> oh. What? <laughs> no, we live here with <laughs> giants and, yeah. and, and and blue people. That are, <laughs> you're right. Let me let me ask my boss. I'm gonna go through the door real quick, <laughs> and I'll be right back. I swear to God. He's not coming. Swear back, to God. He's bloody as I come back. back. Uh, I think that sounds great. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. So HBO, you can. Uh, then Should they me. comment below? Yeah, HBO, please comment below <laughs> yeah. if you're making that show. Yeah, let me know so <laughs> I can get in, in touch with you. Yeah. <laughs> I make a great wench. <laughs> <laughs> there could be a wench in every one of those shows, too. And it could oh, be the same one. Yeah. It could be like a magical wench that, oh. that jumps around to the shows. She's I'll a, be like the Stan Lee of wench. <laughs> <laughs> the watcher wench. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> That yeah, that very well may be what the the, the red witch is. I yeah. mean, I mean yeah. she's clearly centuries old. Right? <laughs> yeah. She's probably been through all these timelines. Yeah. All right, that was the main story, and that's our show. Thank you very much for joining us, Soren Bowie. Do you mm -hmm. have a Twitter account where people can follow you? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, you can follow me at Soren S O R E N underscore L T D. Maggie May, where mm -hmm. can people find you on the internet? Oh boy, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Maggie M A G G I E. May, M-A-E, fish like the animal. <laughs> so Maggie may fish like the animal? Uh-huh, uh -huh. Okay. The, yeah. the beast the that thing. you see in the wild all the <laughs> All right, I'm Daniel. You can find me at uh, D-O-B underscore I-N-C. And this has been excessive pop culture discussion. Uh, you can tweet at any and all three of us with the hashtag EPCD with uh, ideas for future episodes that you want us to do. And we'll ignore them because the show is based around headlines that come out during the week. Uh, but I like to give work to people because it makes them uh, feel important. It feels useful. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've never understood people who feel used. Mm. I only feel useful. Like, yeah. It's because you're two white men. <laughs> <laughs> Join us next time. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank you for watching. Please click the big C in the middle to subscribe. Click either of the other videos in the two boxes on the side of this video to watch other funny videos that we love. Uh, make sure you click that dumb f***ing YouTube bell so YouTube tells you whenever a new video of ours comes out. And uh, please in the comments leave better titles for this show. I mean, there's, there's no time, but I'm just curious what a better mind than mine would come up with. <laughs>